What's going on everyone, Axel Beats here for Anime Uproar, and today we're taking a look at all of the non-canon Devil Fruit in One Piece. Devil Fruits have always been an iconic part of the series, and as we've received so many movies, games, and filler episodes over the 25 plus year run, there's definitely been more than enough to talk about. You know the drill though, if you are enjoying the One Piece content on the channel, remember to leave a like and a comment down below, and of course if you haven't subscribed to the channel, make sure you do so so that you don't miss any of our future videos. First up, I want to give a big thank you to today's sponsor, ReFantasia Charm and Conquer, for supporting our channel. You guys know how much we love anime and manga here, but some of you might not know that we actually love Isekai so much that we even had our own Isekai light novel series. That's why we're so excited to work with ReFantasia. As with all great Isekai, our story begins with a run-in with Truck-kun, but you're instantly transported to a magical world where you run a medieval city filled with magic, battles, and of course, your own personal harem of maids, succubi, and catgirls. So it has a bit of something for everyone. The game has a really interesting system of progression as you train your troops, go on dates, and win over the hearts of your countrymen by making choices that have real impact on the story. On top of that, you can actually connect your kingdom with your friends through marrying off your heirs to make both of your cities more powerful. So don't forget to look us up in game with the username Anime Uproar and the ID 105470111 so that we can work together and save the world with our harems. Not only that, but if you use the code 1LUVRF, you'll get two glass brushes, two clovers, and 100 crystals free to help you kick off your journey. Check it out for free with the link in the description. As is tradition in this series, there are a lot more Paramecia than Logia or Zone. So let's start with the smaller group and move on to the big ones, kicking things off with the Logia. There have been a total of three Logia fruit introduced outside of the main series. However, it's been a pretty long time since we've seen them. Our first Logia fruit was the Toro Toro no Mi, or the Fluid Fluid Fruit. This was eaten by Honey Queen in the second One Piece movie, Clockwork Island Adventure. This fruit allowed the user to become and produce a pink syrupy liquid. It enabled Honey Queen to pass through small spaces and avoid attacks. However, for some reason, and let's be real, we all know the reason, she wasn't able to keep her clothes like other Logia fruit users do. The main weakness of the Toro Toro no Mi is that Honey Bee is unable to turn back into her normal body if she's in a space that she would be too small to fit in, which does make sense. However, this allows Nami to very easily capture her just by simply putting her in a jar. From a movie to a game, we jump to the Pasa Pasa no Mi, or the Paper Paper Fruit. This was eaten by Simon in the One Piece Great Hidden Treasure of the Seven Phantom Islands game. This fruit allows the user to turn into tiny sheets of paper so that they can dodge attacks and inflict thousands of tiny paper cuts on their opponents. This is basically a mix of Kaluto from Hunter x Hunter and Conan from Naruto. Simon also infused his papers with ancient symbols, allowing him to imbue them with extra effects like fire resistance, creating explosions, poisoning his enemies, etc. On top of that, by transforming into paper, he's able to fly, which puts him in a pretty exclusive group of Devil Fruit users. And finally, the Ame Ame no Mi, or the Candy Candy Fruit. This was eaten by Gaspard in One Piece Movie 4, Dead End Adventure, and the fruit allows Gaspard to create and turn into green candy syrup, which despite being candy, is unfortunately unedible. On top of this, despite Devil Fruit supposedly being an intuitive thing, Gaspard seems to have not mastered the Logia part of his fruit yet, as he can still be struck when he's not paying attention. His intangibility could also just be turned off if he came in contact with Flower, which is a very specific weakness. In general, this fruit could be used to create traps for his opponents, slowing them down in his syrup and then using the opportunity to just jump on them or he could turn parts of his body into spikes and then harden it, or use his goop in a more similar way to Luffy and his stretching abilities. But that's actually it for the Logia, so let's move on to the Zones. Zones tend to not be as flashy as Logia fruit, which is probably why we have twice as many non-canon Zones as we do from Logia. Starting off with the two Tori Tori no Mi, or bird bird fruits we have. Firstly is Model Eagle, which made an appearance in Movie 11, One Piece 3D, Straw Hat, Chase. This fruit was eaten by the dog named Buzz and allowed him to turn into an eagle. While also obviously having a hybrid form, most of the zone fruits we're going to talk about are just transformed form, hybrid form, that's it. That's kind of how the fruits work. 
unfortunately there's not a whole lot more detail to them. More importantly though, I hadn't seen this movie before and good lord is it so ugly. The other bird bird fruit that we had was actually the mythical model Nui. This fruit was created for and first seen at the One Piece Kyoto event to celebrate the 20th anniversary. The story is that Toratsugu found it as he escaped prison in Wano and after eating it he was able to turn into the mythical yokai, the Nui, as well as obviously having an in-between form. For those who don't know, the Nui is basically the Japanese chimera, often seen with pheasant or tiger-like features, sometimes having a monkey's face, or a tanuki's body, or a snake tail. It's a very malleable creature, and depending on the story it's going to have slightly different traits. But basically, it's extremely cool, and I wish we could have seen it animated. For our named zones, we actually only have two left, each being from the Unlimited World Red game, and each being mythical zones. Firstly, we have the Bato Batonomi, or Bat Bat Fruit, model vampire. This was eaten by Patrick Redfield, the main antagonist of the game, and allowed him to become a vampire. With this, he could fly, he had the ability to shroud himself in darkness or teleport through bursts of blood, and all that is extremely badass. The fruit's biggest strength, though, is allowing Redfield to suck someone's life energy from them by biting their neck or digging his nails into their skin allowing him to regain his own youth and making him effectively immortal. It kind of makes me wish that we had more monster-themed fruits in Thriller Bark, but unfortunately, we just had Moria. Redfield also had a pen called Pato, and much like Mr. Four's gun or Spondum's sword, Pato also ate a devil fruit. This being the Inu Inu no Mi model Bake Danuki, or the Dog Dog Fruit model Monster Tanuki. As I said, it's another mythical zone which allows Pato the pen to transform, create objects, and even summon attacks from other characters, for example Enel's lightning or Kuzan's ice, by means of using leaves as a medium. But with those out of the way, we can move on to the three unnamed zone non-canon devil fruits as well, and as these don't have names, I'm gonna go ahead and name them, that sounds kinda fun. And we're gonna be starting with Cheeky Cheetah of the Foxy Pirates, who has a cheetah-based devil fruit that gives him increased speed likely the cat-cat fruit model cheetah. Alpaca Chino is Shuzu's bazooka who ate an alpaca fruit. This allows him to spit cannonballs from his mouth and even infuse hockey into them. If I had to name it, I'd probably go with something like the horse horse fruit model alpaca. I know it's not an actual horse, but a lot of zones seem to fall under umbrellas of similar shape and form animals. For example, all the dinosaurs being Ryu Ryu or Dragon Dragon Fruits, or the Kitsune being a dog dog variant rather than a fox. That plus we already have one horse horse fruit so we know the category exists, so I think it's decently likely. And finally we have All Hunt Grounts Fruit. All Hunt is a marine who worked under Aokiji, and his fruit is incredibly interesting. And that's because rather than allowing for a full or hybrid transformation like most other zones, all it did was transform his left arm. This arm becomes massive, covered in red fur, it's tremendously powerful, and it's just really cool. It seems to be a gorilla's arm, but the red fur and the limited area can make it a little bit hard to tell, but for now we're just gonna go with the monkey monkey fruit model gorilla. And with that, we have the end of our 10 Logia and Zone non-canon fruits, and we can finally move our way into the many, many non-canon paramecia. The first of which we saw in One Piece the movie, the Goe Goe no Mi, or the Scream Scream Fruit, was eaten by Eldorago, and it's a pretty simple fruit, allowing for him to shout very powerful sound blasts out of his mouth. It's kind of like an oversimplified version of Apu's Oto Oto no Mi, but even for being something so simple, the Scream Scream Fruit can be pretty destructive. However, just like any other sound wave, it can be bounced back or deflected, especially if you're battling a particularly bouncy boy, and this can cause it to backfire quite a bit. Seemingly the exact opposite of screaming, we have the Hiso Hiso no Mi, or the Whisper Whisper Fruit, which was eaten by Apis in the Warship Island arc. This allows her to speak with and understand animals, such as the dragons that inhabit the island. Interestingly enough, this arc also shows us that Luffy was able to communicate with the dragon on some level, being our first look at the voice of all things, and if it wasn't the actual first look, it's certainly one of the first. And I know it's not super relevant here, but it's something cool that no one ever talks about and it's my video, so I'm gonna put it in. Warship Island also introduces us to Eric and his Kama Kama no Mi, or the Sickle Sickle Fruit. 
This allows Eric to create sickles out of the air and launch them at his opponents. It's a very simple fruit, but any ability that produces some kind of blade or sharp edge, especially early on, was something that Luffy really struggled with, so it was at least somewhat interesting for the time. Oh, and before we move on, remember when Nami just kills this dude by knocking him off the Mary on Reverse Mountain? Dude is a Devil Fruit user and 100% cannot swim. It's basically GG, meaning Nami is the first Straw Hat to kill someone on screen. Something I really liked about this arc in particular is that throughout the East Blue, we only saw a few Devil Fruits total. We had Luffy, Buggy, Alveda, Smoker, and probably Dragon. It's a pretty limited group, and it's usually one per arc, if that. But this arc, we suddenly have two. Yes, it's filler, but I always really appreciated that the closer we got to the Grand Line, we suddenly have more and more Devil Fruits becoming more common. Anyways, moving on to the second movie, One Piece Clockwork Island Adventure. In this movie, we have the Kachi Kachi Nomi, or the Hard Hard Fruit. This was eaten by Bear King and allows him to harden any part of his body, making it very difficult to injure him and allowing his attacks to have a lot more impact. He can also heat up his fists, which allows him to burn his enemies with his punches. The Nemu Nemu no Mi, or the Sleep Sleep Fruit, was eaten by the seahorse Noko, who was the main antagonist of the One Piece Ocean's Dream video game. This was later brought in for the anime-only Ocean's Dream arc as well, but the Sleep Sleep Fruit allows Noko to trap people in dream worlds while they sleep. Then he can steal their memories to make himself stronger. Noko can also hypnotize people, create illusions from the smoke that he produces, and can even paralyze others as he steals their memories. Next up, a really cool one, the Mini Mini Nomi, a fruit which was introduced under two different users, depending on which medium you're looking at. In the One Piece Round the Land game for PS2, it was used by Bilyu, Bilyu, Biyue, Buryu, I don't know how to pronounce this, but in the Z's Ambition arc, it was instead eaten by Lily the Glutton, whose name is much easier to pronounce. The Mini Mini Fruit is a really fun one, allowing its user to shrink down to 5mm tall, but at the same time allowing them to keep all of their normal strength. Obviously, they can become any size in between as well, from their normal height to that 5mm tall. The fruit also extends to the wearer's clothes and weapons, and on top of that, both of the users that we see are normally giants, so they have a ton of strength packed into, quite literally, a very tiny package. On to the Ice Hunter arc, where we have Achino and his Atsu Atsunomi, or the Hot Hot Fruit. It allows him to heat himself up to 10,000 degrees, and once he's heated, he can shoot steam out of his nose to float, melt anything he touches, and even affect the air around him, launching pockets of hot air through his punches. I was also 100% sure that his sons with the weird magnet power were also Devil Fruit users, but I guess they were just naturally able to do that. So if you guys would want a video on non-Devil Fruit users with cool powers like them or Miss Golden Week, let us know, we'll get it out for you. Next up though, we have the Noko Noko no Mi, or the Shroom Shroom Fruit from the ninth One Piece movie, episode of Chopper and the Miracle Winter Cherry Blossom. The Shroom Shroom Fruit was eaten by Mushuru, who was Waffle's older brother. The fruit allows him to create poisonous mushroom spores, both in mist or energy blasts. He can create and control clones, transform his body into several different attacking forms by producing mushrooms. It's definitely one of the weirder fruits out there, and it absolutely is one that pushes the envelope of the idea of what a fruit actually does. In the Little East Blue arc, we met Largo, the captain of the Amigo Pirates, who had the Ami Ami no Mi, or the Net Net Fruit. This allowed him to just generally create nets. On top of this, he can infuse whatever he eats or drinks into the nets that he produces. So if he eats metal, if he eats hot water, or if he eats fire, he can create nets out of those things, which is pretty awesome. Finally, he can also turn his own body into a net as well, and make himself immune to physical blows. Next up, moving on to the One Piece premiere show, something that's going to show up more and more in this list as it continues. In 2012, we had Chameleon, who ate the Copy Copy Nomi, which allowed him to copy the Devil Fruit abilities of others. Film Z also brought a few new Devil Fruits with it, first with the Moto Moto Nomi, or the Return Return Fruit. This is probably one of my favorite that the franchise has ever had to offer. 
this fruit was eaten by Ain and allowed her to de-age anyone that she touched by 12 years. And this could also be done several times if need be, even until the target is unborn and basically dies. This obviously draws comparisons to Bonnie's Devil Fruit, but the major difference is that the Moto Moto is more limited in the changes it can actually make, with the trade-off that it can affect non-living beings as well. And as I mentioned, this fruit doesn't seem to have a limit as well going backwards, whereas I'd imagine Bonnie can't unborn someone. Back to the idea of being used on non-living things though, the Moto Moto can de-age things like Igneous Rock into Magma or if a piece of wall or ground is broken, it can be reformed or used to surround someone to basically make it a trap. It is a super interesting fruit, and it does not hurt even a little bit how cute the user is. A less cute user, though, is Binz, who has the Mosa Mosa Nomi, or the Grow Grow fruit. Also introduced in the same movie, it allows him to make plants grow and then control them. It's basically the devil fruit version of Usopp's Pop Greens, and while Binz is pretty lame, the fruit is pretty cool. The next fruit has two origin points, first seen in the One Piece premiere show for 2013 and used by Lamber Bukini, but in the anime, it was found during the Silver Mine arc and used by Bill. The Smelt Smelt fruit allows the user to become a human furnace. Bill could eat ore and then turn it into whatever he might need at any given time. Blades, guns, minecarts, armor, if it can be made from the ore that he consumes, he can produce it whenever he wants. He can also coat his body in silver armor, attack with molten ore, and it's apparently strong enough to melt an entire island. Lambert's fruit was more or less the same, except he didn't need to consume ore to use this power. The Pito Pito Nomi, or the Pet Pet Fruit, was used by Breed in the Caesar Retrieval arc. This allowed Breed to create collars, which would force the wearer to obey him. He could also put collars on himself to reach his own full potential or even beyond. For example, giving him the ability to levitate. It's important to note that this fruit isn't all powerful though. While they must obey any order, they need to be able to actually hear the order and understand it for it to work. On top of that, he only controls their actions through the commands, so in between the commands they're free to act or plot however they'd like. And with that, we're up to the 2014 premiere show with the Kone Kone Nomi, or the Need Need Fruit. This was eaten by Bildi and allows the user to transform targets into other people. This transformation also copies the abilities and strengths of that person, but cannot be used on the user themselves. We saw Bildi making fake versions of Hody Jones, Crocodile, Luchi, Kid, Buggy, Mr. Three, Boa, Law, and Ors, so it's a pretty useful tool if you're trying to give your army a boost. The 2014 show also had Smash and his Zuma Zuma fruit, or the Plasma Plasma fruit. This allowed him to create, manipulate, and turn into plasma as he saw fit. Typically, this was shown through him creating large electricity balls. The Moa Moa Nomi, or the More More fruit, was used by Brindy World. Brindy World. They give some of the strangest names to these filler characters. Introduced in the 3D2Y special, the More More Fruit allows its user to increase the size and speed of whatever they touch, basically turning him into a living catapult. We've seen both speed and size be multiplied up to a hundred times, and it's pretty straightforward the amount of damage that he'd be able to do with this fruit. Also in 3D2Y, we have the Kubu Kubu Fruit, or the Cube Cube Fruit. This allows anything that the user Gairam touches to be formed into a cube. This can also be channeled through his hammer as well for extra range and power. Gairam can break things down into tiny cubes, launch his cubes any directions he wants, stack them, or even form air into cubes that he can use as weapons as well. In the 2015 stage play, Lucy and Lucy Coliseum The Battle, we have the Maji Maji Nomi, or the Magic Magic Fruit, which allows the user, Inchiken, to perform stage magic such as illusions, hypnotizing, and escaping from his opponents. The 2015 premiere show brought us two new Devil Fruits, with Burst's Naito Naito Nomi, or the Nitro Nitro Fruit, which allows him to create explosions by clapping or by impacting his opponents. We also got the Hore Hore no Mi, which was eaten by Bonbon, bon, and this fruit causes any living creature that he touches to fall in love with him, or anyone else that he chooses. They'll listen to anything that he tells them to do, however, this fruit will not affect anyone who is already in love. 
In Film Gold, we got the Nuke Nuke no Mi, or the Through Through Fruit, eaten by Tanaka. With this, Tanaka is able to phase through solid objects, allowing him to travel through walls, dodge attacks, or even make the floor intangible and cause whoever's standing on it to fall through. That said, he is not able to affect other living things. I mentioned the Silver Mine arc earlier, but we also had the Koro Koro no Mi in here, or the Roll Roll Fruit. This was eaten by Averon and has the very specific ability of being able to turn him into a minecart. It also allows him to store things inside of himself, like cannons or weapons, but honestly this just kind of feels like a very early version of Diesel's Devil Fruit from the Whole Cake Island arc. The Jara Jara no Mi, or the Chain Chain Fruit, was used by Mad Treasure in the Heart of Gold special. Mad is able to create chains of seemingly any size, from necklaces to massive ones to hurt his opponents. He can also change what they're made of, as we see him using steel, gold, or even diamond to make them weaker or stronger, and he can use these chains to strike enemies, capture them, or even use different tips for utility with things like grappling hooks. It's a very versatile fruit, which offers a lot of extra options than you might expect. The Iro Iro no Mi, or the Color Color Fruit, also comes from Heart of Gold, but was used by Psycho P. This fruit allows the user to camouflage themselves or anything else, making them practically invisible, even for objects as big as ships. Psycho P can also use this fruit to disguise people as others, but it doesn't work very well, unless the person they're trying to fool is pretty dumb. While this fruit might seem pretty strong on paper, it has a ton of flaws. Firstly, anyone with good observation hockey can just still see you. And second, which is probably more impactful, is that he needs a tool like a spray can to actually use his fruit. Which is just so lame. In Film Gold, we got the Goru Goru no Mi, or the Gol Gol fruit. This was eaten by the antagonist of the movie, Guild Tessero, and allows him to manipulate any gold that he touches. He can change it from liquid to solid or back, reshape it however he sees fit, and do whatever he wants with it. He can use it to surround people, encase them in gold, or even create armor for himself, even being able to turn himself into a massive golden golem. When awakened, Guild is able to actually extend his senses through the gold that he's controlling, making it this network of information for himself. It's a really cool fruit, but it does have some massive weaknesses. Firstly, he can't create gold himself, so he has to find and touch it. And secondly, if any of the gold that he is controlling is touched by seawater, he loses control of it. More interesting to me this movie was the Rocky Rocky no Mi, or the Lucky Lucky Fruit. This was used by Baccarat and allows her to steal luck from anyone that she touches, both making the target very unlucky while she herself became very lucky. If she absorbs enough luck, she effectively becomes invincible as the world around her will bend so that she can't be harmed and so that she's always successful. The main downside of this fruit is that the effects aren't permanent, and she'll basically need to top up every now and then. Moving on to the 2016 premiere show with the Nepa Nepa no Mi, or the Wave Wave Fruit. This allowed Vice Admiral Wilder to create heat waves strong enough to destroy Promised Land. The heat waves can also be amplified or directed through using a fan. Here we also got the Mono Mono no Mi, or the Paste Paste Fruit. This was used by Poke, and allowed him to create clones of people or objects. These clones had the same abilities, but were weaker than the originals, and included people like Magellan, Doflamingo, Crocodile, Moria, and even the Going Merry to name a few. I am noticing a trend in these premiere shows where they love the idea of copying characters, and I would hope that this is the last one, because this is like the third or fourth iteration of that. One Piece Live Attraction 3 brought us the introduction of Anne, who had the Bijo Bijo no Mi, or the Vision Vision Fruit, although we would later see her in Stampede as well. Anne is able to create illusions of any picture that she touches, which allows her to fool enemies or bolster the morale of her allies. The Ute Ute no Mi, or the Gun Gun Fruit, was used by Bad One Gracie in the 2017 premiere show. This fruit allows Gracie to transform anything around them into guns or cannons, and the scale is pretty crazy, as he can transform even chunks of the sea, massive walls, or the entire island into firearms. The major downside of this fruit is that Gracie's hands have also been permanently turned into guns. Also in the 2017 premiere show, we have the Pocha Pocha no Mi, or the Fat Fat Fruit. This was used by Nero and allowed him to control the level of fat in both his own and other people's bodies. The 2018 show would give us Bounty and her Bana Bana no Mi, a fruit which allowed her to turn the jealousy that she had into heat or flames. 
then using those to attack or grab onto and burn the person. We also had Prize and his Deri Deri no Mi, which allowed Prize to send any object or person to any point that he could see. This includes weapons, viruses, poison bombs, or even someone's heart, which is an interesting fruit to say the least. In One Piece novel law, we got Archer Baka and his Dero Dero no Mi, which allowed him to shoot beams from his eyes that cause anything, even themselves, to dissolve. When in liquid form, Archer is immune to physical attacks, but is still susceptible to electricity. He can also raise the acidity in his body to melt anything that he touches, and finally, Archer can also dissolve things metaphorically. For example, melting your heart's resistance to him and giving him control over you for 24 hours. If this is not turned off in that period, whoever the target is will die. At the 2018 One Piece dramatic stage, the Metal Marineford of Remembrance event, we were introduced to the Meta Meta Nomi, or the Metal Metal Fruit. This allowed the user Gradle to control liquid metal similar to Mercury. He was able to split himself into many of these metal parts, and each part would be able to communicate with each other. And as is tradition for live events, any of those parts could change their form to look like someone else. Balzac, spelled B-A-L-Z-A-C and not the other way, was introduced in the 2019 premiere show. He had the Basu Basu Nomi, or the Boom Boom Fruit. This is the reverse of Mr. Five's Bomb Bomb Fruit, which allowed him to turn his own body into a bomb. Instead, Balzac can turn anything they touch into bombs, more or less like Kira from JoJo's Part 4. Douglas Bullet in Stampede had the Gasha Gasha Nomi, or the Clank Clank Fruit, allowing him to make machines by assimilating the world around him, using a telekinetic power to disassemble or assemble things however he'd like, for example producing a giant exoskeleton, a submarine, or whatever else he might need at any time. When awakened, this fruit can also manipulate the environment as well, not being limited to machinery. Next up is the Nibi Nibi no Mi in the 2021 premiere show. This was used by Cardia, and it very simply allows them to look like dead people. And finally, we have Uta's Devil Fruit from Film Red, the Uta Uta no Mi, or the Song Song Fruit. This fruit allows Uta to send people's consciousness into a virtual space called the Uta World by singing. In this world, she is basically all-powerful, controlling everything around her, and it's impossible for anyone else to leave on their own. She has to open the door for them. On top of that, she's able to control the actual bodies of anyone trapped in her virtual world. The major downside of this fruit is that Uta is only able to keep Uta world open for as long as she is awake, and actually using her devil fruit is extremely draining, so it doesn't last for super long. And that is more or less it, with the exception of three non-canon joke devil fruits mentioned in SBS. These being the Barf Barf Fruit, which makes the user never stop barfing, the Bad Joke Fruit, which forces you to tell bad jokes, and the Itchy Crotch Fruit. So, yeah. While these were not created by Oda, they are included in One Piece mediums, and if I'm being honest, we needed more fruit anyways to hit that 50 mark, so I'm going to appreciate you playing along. But that wraps up all of the Paramecia, bringing us to 52 non-canon fruit total. Not all of these are created equal, and there are definitely some that stand out well above the rest. To me, I think that the Mini Mini Fruit, the Lucky Lucky Fruit, and the Return Return Fruit all are really, really cool, and I would love to see more of them, but I would love to know which ones were your favorite, so let me know in the comments down below. And while you're down there, remember to support the channel by leaving a like, and don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss any of our other great One Piece content. Another massive thank you to Refantasia, Charm, and Conquer for sponsoring this video. Remember to check them out in the description. But with all that being said, thank you all so much for watching, and until next time, remember to stay excellent.